Christie with Glidefast Consulting. Today, I'm going to be showing an example of binding an alert to a non-host CI using event rules. And today, I'm going to be showing an example where an alert gets bound to an application service type CI. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So the default out of the box behavior for events and alerts in ServiceNow is that when an event comes in and it has the node field populated and this node can be found in the CMDB, the alert that is raised from the event will have that configuration item set. And that's exactly what we see here. So this is the alert that goes with the event I just showed. The node field was populated with a CI that could be found in the CMDB and then the alerts configuration item field got populated. So that's exactly what I expect. But what if I wanted this alert to have the CI populated with an application service CI instead of a node CI? Well, let's take a look at how we can do that. So whenever I'm creating a new event rule, I create it off of the event itself. I never go into, you know, the menu event rules and then click new, create a new event rule because then I won't get any of the raw info from the event. So this is going to be for SCOM binding alert to CI. Uh, I'm not going to set an event filter. And so now we're going to our transform and compose alert. So the first thing we need to do is clear out the node field and that's so the alerts node field won't get populated and then have the configuration item set as the host CI. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the additional information field on the event. And the way this works is the sender of the event can add an additional information section to the event. So it's like a, a JSON payload. So you would be adding another field called additional info, and then you would add whatever data you needed as a JSON type payload. And then using the additional information on the ServiceNow side, I can create an event rule that will parse info from there. And here's what we can see for this event. We had an additional information field called app. And for this event, the raw data was a pack billing. So this allows me to enrich the way the alert will be raised by instead of raising it just against a server CI, now I can raise it against an application CI. So let's take a look at the binding section. Sorry, just so it's clear here. So I, I set this to use name. Now, the reason is I'm going to utilize this as the name field for the application service CI. So th this is essentially what I'm doing here is I'm trying to map this APAC billing value to the name of the CI I want to set. And now let's take a look at our binding. So I'm gonna override the default binding. I'm gonna use CI field matching and I'm going to use the application service CI. And so here's the instructions. So as we already saw, I cleared out the node fields, selected the CI type of application service, and then utilizing the additional information so I used a name with the same name as a field of the selected CI. And that's what I was just explaining back here about setting the name field. So that's my alert rule. I've got everything set up now. So let's take a look at what would happen now if we got that same event, but our alert rule has now been activated. So I'm going to send that event again. Okay, here's our new event and there's the additional information. So it's telling us which app 
that is having an issue. And now we've got an alert raised. So let's take a look. And the configuration item was set to a pack billing. And just for the sake of making sure this is all associated with the right event. So let's go take a look at the alert here. And perfect, that's exactly what I expected. So now I have this alert raised against an application service CI instead of a server CI. And the benefit of this can be that now this alert can go to the application team instead of the infrastructure team. And that will help get this application up and running back to a healthy state more quickly. Uh, it also gives us the benefit of being able to triage and remediate issues by their impact to the business. If I'm getting an alert just raised against a server CI, well, that doesn't necessarily tell me how big of a deal is this, right? I mean, if this server is supporting a, a very minimally utilized application that's not very important to the business, it, then it's not something that needs to be addressed immediately. However, if this is supporting a service that's absolutely critical to my business, then that would need to be addressed right away. And that's just not always clear when you've got just a server CI. If you've taken the time to set up application services, then you can take advantage of utilizing that to raise the alerts and triage as it would impact the business. And that's everything I had to show for today. Thank you for watching.